Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of 2020 here on High Octane Cards. Wasn't sure what video we were going to open the gear up with, but I decided to go ahead and do a quick set review of the 1996 VIP Emerald Proof set by Press Pass. Uh, a few of you that may know me really well know that this is a set that I worked on for nearly 20 years. It started at Walmart years ago when I bought a few packs of 96 VIP and ended up pulling an Emerald Proof card out of one of those packs. I believe the, the ratio was 1 to 18 packs or 1 to 24 packs. I don't know the exact odds, but I ended up buying a few more packs here and there at different places and ended up having a total of 3 out of 54 of the Emerald Proof cards, and it became my mission at that point to complete that set. eBay was not a thing at the time, so I was able to just at card shows and card shops and whatnot, was able to find a few here and there. And then on eBay, I started buying these cards mostly in lots that people would sell. In 2017, because I started buying these cards in late 96, early 97, but in 2017, middle of 2017, I was able to complete the set with Jeff Gordon card number 30. That was the card that had eluded me for quite some time. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and just start the set review. Each one of these cards I've put in uh, soft sleeves and inside of top loaders. I would like to complete a master set of 96 VIP. It's overall my favorite racing set. Just the presentation of the cards is nice. They're good quality cards. Um, and as you see with this, uh, the foil is green and it's numbered out of 380. They're one of 380. And on the flip side, each card is individually hand numbered. We're not going to go through each hand-numbered card, but I just give you a visual of the back of the card. <coughs> Excuse me. In the front of the card there, you see is John Andretti as card one, and the drivers are in alphabetical order. Then there's some car cards, and there's some crew chiefs, engine builders, so on and so forth. It's a very basic set. It's only 54 cards. But again, I really enjoy this set for some reason. Uh, the base cards have a gold foil. The first level parallel called Torkers has a silver parallel. The Emerald Proof, of course, is green and is numbered out of 380. There's some other insert sets in this uh, line. The VIP is probably the highest line of Press Pass at that time, maybe Press Pass Premium. But the 96 VIP also included headgear cards, die cut headgear, uh, war paint. Uh, there was a Sam Bass series that had, I believe it was called Knights of Thunder, or that may have been in 97, but there was a regular version and a gold version of those as well. And there was Dale Earnhardt memorabilia cards, which I've got one of. I believe there's six total. They're not numbered, so there's probably hundreds or if not thousands of each one of those produced, but they are different levels. I believe there's a black, a white, and a blue, and maybe a silver. I really don't remember. But let's continue with the set here. First card we had was John Andretti back when he drove for Kranifus Haas in 1996. 1997, he would drive for Cale Yarborough Motorsports, winning his first race at Daytona. Here we have 1995 Rookie of the Year Johnny Benson. I'm sorry, 96 Rookie of the Year Johnny Benson. 95 was Rookie Craven, of course. The, so uh, Johnny took over the 30 pencil Pontiac from Michael Waltrip, won Rookie of the Year. Had a great run in Indianapolis that year, I remember. Uh, Jeff Burton drove for Jack Roush, his first season at Roush Racing, the number 99 XI Ford. Here we have Jeff's brother, Ward Burton, who drove for Bill Davis in 96, drove the MBNA Pontiacs. Ward won his first race in 95 at Rockingham. We spoke of Ricky Craven a few minutes ago. There's Ricky, who was the 95 Rookie of the Year, driving for Larry Hedrick Motorsports, a Kodiak Chevrolet. Then we have Wally Dallenbach Jr. Now, also, the 96 VIPs did have an autograph set. Wally is in that autograph set. I did buy a lot of cards. Wally has an autograph set, but it is not listed in the Beckett, so I thought that was a little bit awkward. But Beckett is not always, as we know, 100% accurate. But Wally Dallenbach drove in 1996 for Bud Moore in the Hayes Modems Ford. This is the pinnacle card of the 96 VIP Emerald Proof set, Dale Earnhardt. Of course, Dale drove for Richard Childers, number three Goodrin Chevrolet. Bill Elliott drove his own self-owned McDonald's Fords in 1996. This was the second year that that team was in existence. 1995, he had a partnership with Charles Hardy, but he ended up buying out Charles later on. This is Jeff Gordon's card with his then-wife, Brooke Gordon. Jeff, of course, drove the 24 DuPont Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Bobby Hamilton, <coughs> excuse me. Bobby drove for Richard Petty. This is his second year driving for Richard. He took over in 1995. Bobby would win his first career race later in 96 at Phoenix. 
Also the first win for Petty Enterprises since 1983. Ernie Irvin, his comeback year, 1996. His first full-time year back from his injury sustained at Michigan in 94, Ernie was driving the Texaco Haviland Ford owned by Robert Yates. And again, just to give you guys another look at the backs of the cards with the hand numbers, a little bit of statistics there, and about a half of a picture to two-thirds of a picture of a car there. Again, I always enjoyed the presentation of these cards. always thought they were they're nice quality stock and just a good visual, just a, good, a nice good card that I've always enjoyed. Here we have Dale Jarrett, who is Ernie's teammate for the first time at Robert Yates, driving the Quality Care uh, Ford, also out of Robert Yates Racing. 1996 was the second year Bobby Labonte drove for Joe Gibbs. Bobby, of course, won the season finale in Atlanta that year, the same year his brother won the championship in that race. I'm getting my stack out of, out of line there, so let's line that back up. We, have, we just spoke of Bobby, now we speak of Terry, the 96 Cup Series champion. That was his second Cup Series championship. 12 years between titles, he was 84 in the 96 champion. So far, that is a record. If Kurt Busch was to win the title this year, Kurt would break that record. We have Sterling Marlin, drove the number 4 Kodak film Chevrolet. He was a back-to-back -back Daytona 500 winner, 94-95. Sterling now races part-time at Nashville Speedway. We have Mark Martin, drove the number six Valvoline Ford for uh, Roush Racing. Mark currently hosts the Mark Martin Podcast, which is on a lot of uh, podcast apps. Very, very nice podcast. Really enjoy it. We have Jeremy Mayfield, who at the time was driving for Cale Yarborough Motorsports. Late 96, him and John Dreddy switched rides, and he would drive the Cranifus Haas car. But this was Jeremy's time driving Cale Yarborough's car. He had a best finish at fourth at Martinsville and Atlanta. Ted Musgrave, this was his third season driving the Family Channel Fords in the Roush Racing uh, stables. In 1995, he had a career high of 7th in the points. He kind of faltered after that. He was about a top 15 driver most of his run at Roush. Never really lived up to the potential that he possibly could have. I'm not sure if that was just the second car uh, just not getting all the attention that the first car got. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have Joe Nemechek, drove his self-owned Burger King Chevrolets in 1996 and in 1995. 1994 was his rookie season. He drove Larry Hedrick's Meineke Muffler Chevrolet in 1994. One of the more popular drivers of the time, Kyle Petty, who's now an NBC analyst on uh, the Cup Series races. Kyle drove for Sabco in the Coors Light Pontiac. Robert Presley whose son Coleman, I believe, is a spotter for, I want to say, Ryan Blaney, but I know his son Coleman is currently a spotter. Robert, at the time, was driving the Jackson Brothers slash Andy Petrie Racing Skull Bandit Chevrolet, and I really don't remember who was owning the car at the time because it was kind of a transitional period for that team, that, that late, mid-90s era where uh, Jackson Brothers were getting out of owning cars and Andy Petrie was wanting to start owning a team. So here we have Ricky Rudd driving his self-owned Tied Ford. Ricky was the 1997 winner at the Brickyard 400. Ken Schrader, this was his last season driving for Rick Hendrick and the Budweiser-sponsored Chevrolets. Ken uh, would later go on to drive the number 33 Skull Bandit car and the M&M's car and a couple other rides before winding down his career in the mid-2000s. He still races dirt tracks, sprint cars, and short tracks today. Here we have Morgan Shepard driving the Butch Mock Motorsports Remington Arms Ford. I was hoping that this team would be a little bit stronger that year, but unfortunately they were met with a lot of mechanical issues and some crashes here and there, just some bad luck. I believe they ended up 20th in points, and I can't remember, but I believe their best finish in 96 was a 5th place at the Brickyard 400. Mike Skinner. A year before he would race for Rookie of the Year. This is not a Mike Skinner rookie card. I believe Mike's rookie card is in the 1995 Finish Line uh, Super Truck set. But this was a second car that Richard Childers had started to get Mike's feet on the ground, get him wet in the Cup Series while he was racing in the trucks. Uh, he raced a number 31 Realtree Chevrolet in five races. Can't remember what his best finish was, but he did have a handful of strong runs. 
Here we have Rusty Wallace, who drove Roger Penske's Miller Genuine Draft Fords at the time. Rusty was always a perennial contender for the Cup Series Championship and would win several races while driving for Roger before later retiring at the end of the 2005 season, I believe. Darrell Waltrip and his self-owned Western Auto Parts America Chevrolet. This was near the end of Darrell's career where he started to become less and less competitive. Don't know if that was an age thing, I don't know if it was an equipment thing, if the team just didn't gel, but this would be the next to last full season he would run in his own car. He would eventually uh, disband his team in early 98 after financial issues from then-sponsor Speedblock. We have Michael Waltrip here, who drove for the Wood Brothers in 96. This was his first of three seasons driving that car. Michael would win the Winston Select All-Star Race that year after transferring from the Open. And at this point in his career, Michael still had not won a points-paying race yet. It would be the February 2001 Daytona 500 where Michael would pick up his first career win. But at this point, he had just left Bahari Racing that he had started his career with and is now transitioning to the Wood Brothers in 96. Had several good runs. This is the card that I spoke of, card number 30. Jeff Gordon, this is the last card that I needed to complete this VIP Emerald Proof set. Now we're going to start getting into some duplicate drivers here, so we'll just kind of rapid fire through those. We have Mark Martin. Now we're going to get to some Bush Series drivers. David Green, who was driving Buzz McCall's Caterpillar Chevrolet in the Bush Series. We have Jeff Green, who was driving for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated in the Bush Series at the time, the Goodrin Chevrolet. Basically, the car was painted identical to Dale's Cup car. Here is uh, Jeff Green's Bush car. You see it's painted identically to uh, Dale Sr.'s Cup car. Jason Keller, driving his family-owned Slim Jim Chevrolets, number 57. Jason was always a popular Bush Series competitor. Chad Little, driving the Mark Rippon slash Jack Roush owned uh, John Deere Pontiacs this year. And they would move up to the Cup Series in 97 with Mark Rippon as the owner. Jack Roush would eventually buy the team and transition it into Fords and... and Chad would drive for him for a few years. Then we have Mike McLaughlin driving the C.C. Welliver owned uh, Royal Oak at this junction, but they had multiple sponsorships through the years with different companies, different brandings, but they ran Royal Oak in 1996, and there's uh, not really a picture of the car, but you see Mike in the car. So Then we have Jeff Gordon's number 24 DuPont finishes Chevrolet. Here we have Dale Earnhardt's GM Goodrent Chevy, as you see, painted very similar to Jeff Green's Bush car. Bill Elliott's McDonald's Ford that was self-owned. Rusty Wallace's Miller Genuine Draft Ford, owned by Roger Penske, who, as many of you know, bought the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So that's very exciting for us <coughs> here in Indy Indiana. Dale Jarrett's Robert Yates Quality Care Red Carpet Lease Ford. Here's one of the many paint schemes Bobby Hamilton ran in 1996 for the 25th anniversary of STP sponsoring the Petty Enterprises Pontiacs. Ernie Irvin's Texaco Haviland Fords, Robert Yates Racing. Ricky Rudd's self-owned Tide Ford. Mark Martin's Roush-owned Valvoline Ford. Now we're getting to some of the crewmen, crew chiefs. Ray Evernham, who was crew chief at the time for Jeff Gordon, would go on to form Evernham Motorsports, which was the beginning of the Dodge return to Cup Series in 2001. I believe Ray now works as a consultant for Hendrick Motorsports. Steve Meal, who at the time was crew chief for Roush Racing and Mark Martin. Steve has bounced around to different teams. I don't believe he is involved in the industry at this time. I know his son Shane was hurt very badly at a sprint car accident in Terre Haute, Indiana many years ago, and Shane has on, been on a road to recovery. Here's Larry McReynolds, who works for Fox. His son Brandon has raced part-time on and off in the Arcus series over a number of years, but this is when Larry was crew chief for Ernie Irvin and the Texaco Haviland Ford for Robert Yates. There's David Smith, who's crew chief for Dale Earnhardt. So at this point, Andy Petrie had already left Richard Childers Racing and went to start his purchase of the Jackson Brothers number 33 team to turn it into Andy Petrie Racing. Jeff Andrews, who is a mechanic engine builder on the 
24, well, I say 24, but all of Hendrick Motorsports. So there's a little info, info on Jeff. Then we have, I believe that's Danny Glad. I know Danny had worked with Alan Quickie at one time here. He's working with the Wood Brothers team, driven by Michael Waltrip. Then we have Charlie Seegers, who is another Hendrick Motorsports engine guy. We have Rick Wetzel. Appears to be top heavy with Hendrick Motorsports. And then our final card of the set is the checklist, which we'll look at it front and back. That way everybody can see that we did go through all the cards. Get that in focus a little bit. Number 317 out of 380. So this was a set that I did enjoy putting together. Like I say, it did take about 20 years to put it together. But of course that was just because eBay didn't exist in my early part of putting the set together. So that did add a few years to the time. So anyway, you notice I don't have any die cast in the background. I just bought these mini easels today at... Hobby Lobby decided that I wanted to start putting some cards up in the background. I thought that would add a little bit of flavor other than just a die cast here and there. And of course, we get to 100 subs. We keep inching our way there. Some lucky viewer get this 1998 Tony Stewart VIP rookie card. I know somebody out there would like to have that. So hopefully we'll get into more box breaks here shortly as I get the chance to get out and get some more boxes. I've been doing a little bit of changing around here in my room to get this situated a little bit better. So Maybe I'll have a little bit more access to a few more cards that I want to do and, and sets that I want to show. And, and as always, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Happy New Year once again, and we'll get a lot more videos cranked out this year. Thanks for watching.